when we discussed probability, we talked about dealing with problems with normal distributions, um, calculating probabilities, those sorts of things. In those problems, we were told that our data follows a normal distribution. So that information was just provided for us. But unfortunately, that's not something that we always know. If we're dealing with real world data, it might come from a normal distribution. It might come from some other type of distribution. So what we're going to look at in this section is how we take data and introduce at least one method for assessing normality. Does that data come from a normally distributed population or from something else? And this information is going to come in handy when we look at estimating means. In order to estimate a mean with a confidence interval, we'll need to verify that two different conditions are met. Our samples need to be random and independent. We also need our sample to come from a normally distributed population. So that's why we're interested in assessing normality. Or we'll need to have a sample size of 25 or greater. So when we get into um, estimating means, the first thing we'll check is sample size. <clears throat> if that's large enough, great. If not, we'll need to determine whether our sample comes from a normal population. If those conditions aren't met, then we'll turn to estimating the median for our population. So the question is, how do we assess normality? Given a set of sample data, how do we know if the larger population that that came from, meaning we don't have <clears throat> excuse me, all the data to consider, how are we going to determine whether or not that comes from a normal population? So one method is to consider histograms. We can take our sample data and look at the tops of each of the bars in the histogram and see what shape those trace out. So we talked about normal distributions. We know that a normal distribution is a symmetric unimodal distribution. So this first distribution obviously isn't symmetric. We could throw that out. The third distribution is also not symmetric. The fourth one is somewhat symmetric, but not unimodal. So our only example graph here that would fit a normal distribution would be the second one. We want data that would follow that symmetric unimodal distribution. But depending on how small our sample is, it may be hard to see that shape. And we want to keep in mind, again, the idea that we don't have all the data to consider. We just have sample data. So we might not have the complete picture. So another method is to consider skewness. And we introduced before the idea that if our skewness ends up being negative 1 half to 1 half, our data is approximately symmetric. If we end up with values from negative 1 half to negative 1, or positive 1 half to 1, then our data is moderately skewed. And if we have values that are less than negative 1 or greater than negative 1, then our data is highly skewed. So this gives us another way to determine if our data is symmetric or not. But again, the problem with this, just like histograms, is that this only tells us about our sample data. Only tells us about that information we know and doesn't allow us to draw any inferences about the information that we don't have. So these methods only talk about our sample data, not the population that it comes from. So we need to introduce a method that's going to allow us to look at our sample data and then make an inference about the population all of that missing information that we didn't collect because we didn't have the time, money, or were some other, another way limited from accessing all that information. So before we introduce this new method, the first thing we want to talk very briefly about is at the correlation statistic. So usually represented with either a lowercase r or a capital R. Our correlation statistic measures how well a set of data fits to a straight line pattern. So assuming we've got a couple of straight line patterns here, and then we could plot data as xy coordinates, and we would either see that we have data values that are a relatively good fit for that straight line pattern, 
or we might have data values that are kind of a very bad fit for that straight line pattern. So in our first graph here, we have these values that are following this more or less linear path. Here we have values that are following a very non-linear path. So for right now, just to introduce this idea of the correlation statistic, for this first graph, we have data that's a pretty good fit to that straight line pattern. That means our value for R would be very close to 1. For our second graph, we have a bad fit meaning our value for r would be closer to 0. So not necessarily incredibly close to 0, but just a little bit farther away from 1 than this good fit. 